no more weeds in my yard. <laughs> so find one of those. Do just, you want two hands? Just or one hand. One? One hand, yep. Okay, so just yeah. do this part yep. again. Pull it back and chop it. Yep. Whip it through, yep. There you go. Come a little closer. That's right. Yeah, really good. Yep. Okay, now we'll switch. We'll do left hand, and then you can First put hand. your right hand up on your shoulder. Okay. But we're not going to go, back yeah, hand. backhand. Yep, there you go. Whip it. Yep. All right, so what you're going to see in the video is your left arm doesn't have the same type of speed coordination as your right arm, right? It definitely doesn't. Yep. Yeah. So when we take our, when we come up here to do this golf swing, uh -huh. we're going to dominate the swing with the right hand. Okay. Yep. So now flip it back to your right hand and then whip it through. Wham, right? It's not, it's no contest, yeah. right? It doesn't even, the left arm isn't helping. Right. And that's fine. Most okay. people's left arm doesn't help either. Okay. Problem is they're taught to do certain things like straighten their left arm, right. keep it stiff. Yes, that is right. <laughs> All garbage, <laughs> thumbs, thumbs down. They're all things I've heard. Thumbs down. We don't like that. All right, come on up here. The next step is now we're just going to add two hands to what we were just doing. Okay. But with this stick. This stick. That one. So we're going to go straight to the driver, which is going to be two hands, okay. gripping it just like that. Okay. Now there is no such thing as a golf grip. Okay. So if you've also been taught hook your right. finger, overlap your finger. Yeah. No, 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 no. You need you need ten fingers on there. So put all okay. ten fingers on that stick. Okay. Pull it back. Dominate with your right hand. Yeah, come on up here in the flat spot. Okay. Yep, pull. This is just normal? Comfortable. Okay. Again, we, we're dispelling some of these things, right? Yeah. When we started this lesson, you were thinking way too much. Right. You had a whole laundry list of things you've been told. <laughs> right. right. Because if you, re if you repeated all that stuff, you thought I would do better. That right? is correct. Yep. Exactly. Pull it back, whip it through. Okay, now be easier not <coughs> thinking about it. Way easier, right? Yeah. Now whip it through, and I want you to notice where your arms are here on the back swing, up by your chin. Yeah, they are. Perfect. Yeah. Right? In fact, if you're wearing any foundation right now, yeah. it's gonna rub off on your shirt. Right. Right? If you had so, lipstick, that would also rub off. Yep. Because we're gonna get that arm up. Now, where's, wow. the, where's the lipstick going to rub off? On your left shoulder. Yep. We also want it to rub off on the right shoulder. Oh, so... Yeah. Like, all the way to there? But don't bring your chin down to your arm. Bring your arm up to your chin. So it's almost like a pendulum. Like yeah, yeah. It goes there and then back up. Really good. Okay. Okay. Now, while you're doing this, the only thing we're going to do is we're going to keep our feet on the, on the ground. Okay. So comfortable. Yep, so pull back and stop in your backswing. Yep, okay. get the lipstick on your shirt. Really stretch up. Get those arms up high, right? Now, when you whip this down, you're going to come all the way down, kind of closer to the ground. Okay. And then this arm's going to go up again, up to your lips. So almost make like a, like a rainbow. Yeah, yeah, totally. Perfect rainbow. All the way down and all the way up. And if you can do it fast, then you can do it, hit it further. There you what go. about your lower body? Do you want that straight or do you want it to Just relaxed. Cover? Yeah. Right? So great question. What about the lower body? <clears throat> when you were over there whacking weeds, yeah. w what were you thinking about your lower body? Nothing. Nothing. So we don't need to think about our lower body when we're doing this either. Okay. Okay. Now flip that club over. Okay. Now you're going to put your hands on the club in a strong position so Are that all you... All the fingers touching? Like all the there? fingers. Yep. And okay. just like you're going to whack weeds, right? If I said now we're going to move on to this sagebrush stuff that's much bigger, you got to really gristle up and whack it, right? right? We're not just golf. This golf swing thing isn't this gentle, uh, like technically sound thing where we have to have all these positions and angles. No, we're, we're smashing our ball, right? <laughs> <laughs> all right, so wind it up and whip it through. So same thing. Yeah. Don't worry about the so here's how the ground thing works, right? If you go up too vertically, uh -huh. well then yeah, you might accidentally hit the ground. Okay. But point that club at me. Now we're going like baseball, softball swing. Right. You, you can't hit the ground. Right. Right. Now go back behind you and whip it toward me. 
as fast as you can all the way through. Yep. You? Yeah, yeah. There you go. Like baseball, right? Softball. Yeah. Yep. Can you go faster? Yep. Can you turn your shoulders a little bit and go faster? There you go. That's your golf swing. That's it. <laughs> That's crazy. That's it. <laughs> right now, all we're going to do is kind of lower that a little bit. So you bend a little bit from the waist and then you do the same fast arm swing. That's it. There you go. Now we're going much faster. There you go. You want to use your height. You want to use your strength in this game. Sound good? Yeah, it sounds great. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're just going to tee a ball up oh and we're going to pretend it's a weed, just like we were doing over there. Okay. We're just going to whack it off, right? We're going to chop the ball, whack the top of the, the weed off, right? So let's try it. Okay. So you get there's to... no like measuring <coughs> how close no. to whack the weed. There you go. Yep, try it again. Just chop it off. There you go. All right, so I'll let you tee it up and just have fun with this and tee up two That's or three. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yep, tee up two or three, and okay. that way you don't have to think too much between each one, right? The problem with a lot of, we'll call it um, <clears throat> garbage that gets passed down from golfer to golfer, yeah. right? It's like uh, urban legend, myth, you know, there's all kinds of stuff that gets passed down. Right. And what happens to the best players in the game is they grab a club when they're like two years old and they just do what I'm te teaching you to do. I love that. You can't teach a, easy. you think about your kids, right? If you told them stand this way, grip this way, That's they're too way too much. Yeah. There you go, perfect. Yeah, do it again. Right now, we're going to improve your precision just a little bit. That makes it a lot more fun, too. Way more fun, yeah. Way more fun. Okay, so now you, now you notice a couple of those swings that you did, the ball went up in the air. Yeah. Okay, do you know why? Because hitting underneath. Yeah. So just the way, you, the way this part of the game works is, you know how the weeds over here? Yeah. How you couldn't chop the weeds? Right. And you came closer? Right. And you chopped lower? On the weed you were able okay. to get closer yeah we don't want to chop low we don't want to chop the tee right we just want to take the top off yeah so you back away, back away. Okay. so if you're hitting under I'm standing too close. you're standing too close okay. so just Make reach further simple. yeah reach okay. further go, go even more than that so reach out more keep going keep going you feel like you're way far okay. yeah yeah go for it now let's try to hit it that's better yeah reach out and whack the weeds. There you go. Good. You still went under that one a little yeah, bit. I felt it go under. Right? So the way this works is, it's this angle thing, right? Okay. Now, if you take a driver and you swing it, you're going to swing it on an angle more like this. Okay. One of your shorter clubs, you're going to swing it on more of an angle like this. Okay. So you know how I was telling you go up and get lipstick on your shoulders? Yeah. Right? That's probably a little too high for the driver. Okay. But it's going to be exactly right for like a pitching wedge. Is it? Okay. <clears throat> so now set up a ball and we'll kind of talk through the angle thing. Okay. Great. Okay. Now do your setup. Like Just comfortable. Perfect. Right. Now I want you to go lipstick. Right. Now if you go lipstick, you're going to hit under. Okay. Right. So now as you go back, I want you to go under your chin. So wind up and go lower. Yeah, but twist your shoulders, do all that good stuff, boom. And then you whip it through. Yep. There you go. Crushed it. Nice. All right? So it was really good. So we got the track man set up behind you, okay. and it's capturing certain things like club head speed and that kind of stuff, right? Okay. So let's tee up right between these two divots okay. right here. And then the track man has a better chance of reading it right there. Okay. There you go. Reach a little chin and just whip that, chop that weed. There you go. Good. It's so fun. <laughs> Way more fun, right? Yeah. So well, according to, yeah, according to Trek Man, your club head speed was 80 miles an hour, which is excellent. Okay. 
Now, can we make it go faster? Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, let's go for it. Really pull back and smash it. Boom. That's okay. We don't care. Because your speed was faster, right? So do it again. Same thing. Yep, stretch out a little. Big shoulder turn and smash it. There you go. Really whip it with your arms. There you go. Nice. Look at that. That was 84 miles an hour. Excellent. Right? And you hit it over 200 yards. That one went 213 yards. That's awesome. <laughs> Crush it. Well, that's what makes it fun, though. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah go for it. Boom. That's even better. Yeah, look at that. 85.4. Oh, good. And 222. Awesome. This is fun, huh? <laughs> yeah. See, that's yeah, so let's kind of go through the steps, all right? Just hold that stick. That's your weed whacking stick, right? Don't grip down, grip all the way to the end. Yep, yep, go for it. Boom, nice. Now, I like the weed whacking. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, weed whacking is what it's all about. Yeah. So that was 86 miles an hour, so you're getting faster, which is great. So take your time. Kind of pull that so now I don't need to bend my knees as much no, anymore. So not at all. No, not at all. Oops, yep. Yep. There you go. Really good. That's great. Yep. 84 miles an hour on that one. So what makes this stick go faster is that whip of the wrist. Of the right? Wrist. Yeah, remember when you were in the weeds? You just kind of whipped your hands at it. Yeah. Right, so grab this stick over here okay. and do a couple. Just this? Yeah, either one. Yeah, just kind of pull it up one-handed. Oh, yeah. And then, oh, there. Yeah, was the it was the wrist, right? Yeah. Can you hear it? You can. And can then, you feel it. Yeah. And so the louder that swish sound is, uh -huh. the further you're going to hit it. Okay. Now, what do the hips and the shoulders and all that do? All they do is give you range, right? Okay. So take that club uh, mm -hmm. stick and just hold it in front of you. Don't turn your hips or your shoulders and just go like this with your wrist. You're not going to hit it very far with that, right? Right. Now independently, just use your arm and your wrist. Yeah. Now whip it through. Yeah. Right? That's kind of maxed out there. Right. Now spin your hips and shoulders. That's much better. Right? So we're not using our hips, shoulders, any of that for power. The power comes in the wrist and the swishing of the stick. Okay. The hips and shoulders, all they do is give you a little bit more range so that you can do it. So here's how these two things tie together. If we now know that that right arm, mm -hmm. we'll just call it a right arm sport, right arm wrist swish is all your power. The body provides range and stability. Okay. So now, if you were started doing this wrist swishing thing and your toes were lifting up off the ground and you're swaying back and forth, yeah, you're losing the that stability. precision at the bottom is gonna be go out the window, right? right? So now do the stick swish again. And all I want you to do is feel balance in your feet. Right, it's almost like, it is like equal weight. It's like a tree trunk. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. There you go. All right, now grab that driver again. <clears throat> and as we do our big kind of fluid rotation, we're going to pop it with the wrist. We're going to kind of whip it with the wrist. But what's going to happen now is you just went from a, a very lightweight stick. It only weighed like 40 grams. Right. Okay, now you're going to go to something, club head and shaft. Club head's 200 grams. That shaft's about 40. You got 240 more grams and all the weights at that end. So now when you start whipping this thing around, you're creating all this centrifugal force. Mm -hmm. Well, that centrifugal force causes imbalance of the body. Okay. So when you whip the stick now, your body just has to be prepared so that it doesn't get what I call the speed wobbles. Right? Yeah. Yep. So go ahead and whip it fast. There you go. There you go. So you see what, see what it does? Yeah, it does get your... It begins to challenge your stability. It does. I just noticed my right heel came up a little a bit. A little. Yep. Yeah. 
Yeah. If I didn't watch it, it, yeah, I would get that. Yeah, right? So then you would get the speed wobbles. Right? So now, when we bring all this over to the ball, we've organized all this stuff in our head. Mm -hmm. We're whipping the stick, but we're also providing this equal balance, right? Mm -hmm. So what we have in the physics of it is we have centrifugal force. Okay. There's an equal and opposite force called centripetal with a yeah. P. The centripetal balance allows you to go really fast, but yet also be precise. So your body is a balancing act to right. the arms and the club, right? right? So if I chopped my left arm off, and let's call it 10 pounds, yeah. and my right arm's 10 pounds, and then I've got 240 grams. Right. So I've got 20 pounds, 240 grams of weight flying around my body. Yeah, it's gonna pull you off balance. Yeah, so yeah. now what I have is the rest of my body weight to balance that. Okay. All right, so do some more swishes, and go really fast. There you go. And then use your body to balance. Really good. Okay, now take a break because that's a lot of swings. Yeah. <laughs> but this is all making sense, right? It, it absolutely is. Yep, and I'm recording all this, so this will be like your instructional video. Oh, you just get to watch it over and over again, and yeah. you'll be able to see your progress. Some of these things that we're talking about now, you'll see in these previous swings. You were going up faster, 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 but you were also losing some stability. Right. So that's why we stopped for a second to talk about the stability part. Because okay. you've got the capability, I think, of hitting 90 miles an hour, yeah. maybe even more. I've but it. it's not going to apply to the ball if you're off balance, Correct. right? So sense. let's get a little more balance, which might mean a little wider stance, okay. right? We're not going to need too much flexing of the knees, etc., but we have to be prepared. So whatever degree of bending in the knees, width of stance you need yeah. to whip your arms around, that's what we want. And the knees better than the lifting of the feet. No feet. We don't want the feet coming off the ground because if the feet come off the ground, we get the wobbles. Yeah. Good. All right, let's try it with the ball. So you're going to take a little time to establish the stability part. Because when we crank that motor up, we just gotta be ready for it. Right. <laughs> yep. So there you go. Excellent, good job. Very stable footwork. So now what's gonna happen is when you go and you do something like an 83.8, right? It's gonna net out with much more distance because you're applying the force to the ball more precisely. You're not losing it in your feet. Yeah, exactly. That makes sense. Yeah, good work. All right, so you find, there you go. So now this is all making sense, right? right. You've got to create a stable platform. You're about to create this massive amount of speed. Now let's look at where you set up distance-wise, right? Uh -huh. Pull that thing back like you're about to chuck this, right? Now you come in in slow-mo, all the centrifugal force is going to pull out, pull out, pull out. Oh, that makes sense further. Vroom. So I do need to be further back. Yeah. Be okay, so I was... Yeah. That's interesting. It's like boxing a little bit. I always have to stay way back. Yeah, because of the force when you're coming. Yeah, there you go, like, right? Yeah, so you got to find it, and it's it's different, right? So if you were to swing at, let's see, if you were swinging at 70 miles an hour, you'd stand a little closer. Yeah. Stand at 90 miles an hour, what happens is your arms actually elongate. Yeah. Your shoulders round in. That's so so cool. that yeah, so let's do that. Physics is super cool. Yeah, pull that club up to me up here. Right? So what's going to happen is that's going to go vroom. Right. Now because see what force. happens in your shoulder blades? Yeah, they kind of... Right? So if they were relaxed here, yeah. they vroom. Right. And then what happens is your arms elongate. So wherever you started, you're now going to be like four inches further. Right. When you really throw all that force. So at this point, we're just guessing, just trying yeah. to find where to go. But once you find it... <laughs> you get that. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> Look at that. You're not going to believe it. That was 83 miles an hour, right? 
but you hit it 243 yards. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what we had there was an excellent combination of appropriate speed, not max speed, yeah. but what we had was it all got applied to the ball. So you just hit it 20 yards further than your longest drive. That's crazy. And you hit it probably 40 yards further than any drive you might have already hit ever in your whole life. Right. And, so you, I, and I did it with less force than I've been using before. There you go. That's interesting. There you go. So That's let's so try. Cool to understand the physics of it. <laughs> yeah, so let's try to find that set up distance. So I was kind of back, like I went a club head back. I yeah. Think, after what you said. Yeah. Funny. Another one. Right? So that's why this video is going to be so valuable to you is yeah. because these little things that you're feeling, yeah. like we just guessed right. and we just happened to guess right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that was another good one, right? So that one there was almost 86 miles an hour. Oh, it was faster even. It was faster and it went 245. Wow. So you only picked up two yards, but you went like three miles an hour faster with your club. That's interesting. So that means the, the first one I hit. Hundred percent. And all the pressure went to the right place. That's exactly right. So that's what the lesson there is form yeah. and precision is a multiplier for your power. If you have really, really good form, it just helps that ball go further exponentially, right? Right. If you you could swing your fastest and come out of your shoes and miss hit it and it doesn't go anywhere. Like that one. Right. <laughs> right? Yeah. right? So what happened on that one was your setup distance was probably too far. Too far. Right? Okay. Yeah, no, you're That's doing right. you're doing the great. Range is so important to figure that out. Yeah. Muscle memory of where I need to go. Correct. Yeah. So now the setup, all of the setup stuff before you were doing it in reverse. You were saying if I bend here, grip here, lean here, bend here, it will work. Right. No. What we're saying is if you just swish and swing and whip weeds down, then let's find a stance that allows all of that to work for the ball. So we kind of did it the opposite. I love that. There you go. Nice. Really good. Yep. Oh, I, w I turned the Tino. <laughs> I broke it. <laughs> all that power. That was actually really good. So you got that one all the way up to 87 miles an hour. Right, but we, we went under it slightly, yeah. so that applied force. Let me see your driver head here. Broke the tee. <clears throat> yeah, so you broke the T and you impacted the face up here. Okay. Right, so at ground level, right, if that's ground level, you hit, you see the marks on yeah. top? That's where the ball connected. On your 243, it was dead center. On your 245, it was maybe a little off center. Right, so that's the precision part. All right, so we're going to switch gears and we're going to go the other end, right? So now you've been whipping a longer stick trying to find the setup. Golf is played over an obstacle course, right? You can't just crush it as far as you want every time. Sometimes you got to get it to some of these shorter targets, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to that eight hybrid. Uh, actually, we'll do a mini, a mini step. We'll do nine wood next. So measure the two. Wow. Right? So we just came shorter. down about like four inches or so. Right. So what do you think that's going to do to your body? That means I'm going to stand closer. A little closer. Maybe yeah. tilt a little bit from the waist. Okay. But again, let's swish the stick and let the stick tell us where to stand. Yeah. Right? So we know we got to get this thing to kind of skim closer to the ground. We don't have a T to help us. Yeah, so that what's going to happen is this swish is going to be more vertical. So we go more I'm closer. Yep, you're closer, and we let the shoulders come swing up to the mouth more than under the, sh the chin. Okay. Yep, so go and do some more swings. And the practice swings, I like to call them rehearsal swings. So you're rehearsing the motion. Right, at this point, we should be touching the grass a little. Right? So go ahead and let the weight of the club come down into the turf. So you know that elongation thing we're doing with the driver? Right. Well, we're on a T, right? Right. But we actually want our arms to elongate here and actually kind of mow some grass down. 
There you go. So if we can get tiny little divots or a little bit of grass mowing, we're doing good. Really good, All right? So now look at where you are. So leave your feet there. Oh, you've, yeah. you've done a couple of little skims. If we, just, if we just guessed and put the ball in the middle of those, but don't move your feet, try it again. Let's swish the stick and see what happens. There you go. Just crushed it. <laughs> All right, so that was a nine wood and it flew probably 50 in the no, air. No, it did not. <laughs> it did. <laughs> it did, yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. So let's put it over by Trackman again. Well, Trackman okay. will tell us how far it goes. Yeah, so kind of right in there. We'll put it like, there's a nice fluffy patch right here. All right. <clears throat> so a little too close there. Yeah. So do a practice swing or a rehearsal swing. All right, let's rehearse. Hit the ground a few times. Yeah, move back a little, hit the ground a few times. Just kind of let it skim. All right, let those arms elongate, kind of stretch through. And what happens is if you hit too much ground, you just push your arms further away. Okay. Right? If you're not hitting any ground, bring it closer to your toes. There you go. Really good. All right, so now let's just kind of scoot in. Try to find about what that felt like and swish it. Yeah, pretty good. Now what happened? You dug a hole. Did, so does that mean I was too close? Yeah. Because I elongated too much and yep. I dug it up. Exactly. So what you needed was more space. A little bit more space. Yeah. And I knew that from back here because I could tell from your swing and you'll be able to see on the video. Okay. You'll see, gosh, I was swinging really nice here and then I scooted in and I was cramped up like I was too close. <clears throat> yeah. Right, so I'm going to say you're still too close there. That's too far. <laughs> there you go. Gosh. Right? Yep. Yep, and then go for it. Right? Now the rules would be if we topped it like that, we were too far. Okay. Right? So again, we're only doing our best guess, but the more you do this, the better guesser you become. Right, that's where all the practice Yeah, exactly. Yep. Now look at your stance width. Feet are a little too close together. We need a little more stability. Yep. So try again. Make sure you do those rehearsal swings. Mm -hmm. Yep. Now this is, <clears throat> this is lesson one. It's not only lesson one with us, but it's really your first real like golf lesson. Yeah. Right? For sure. And we talked yeah. about the information that just gets passed down from golfer to golfer and we, we, we have to chuck all that out the window, right? Yes. Because you want to learn, yeah, like a yeah. three-year-old, you don't want to learn, right. like intellectually, you want to learn feels and yeah. forces and all that Muscle kind of stuff. And... Yep. So let's go wider. We got to have a base, much wider. That's a base, right? Then from there, then you can swish. There you go. Right. So as we go with the lessons, we'll refine all this stuff. But for yeah. now, you just want to have fun doing this. You want to swing big, swing fast, yeah. understand some of the small little details of what we're doing. Because like we just talked about, golf is played on an obstacle course. You have to hit at different distances, not all the same. So we'll figure all that out as we go. Yeah, I think the big thing for me are going to try to get the freedom of swinging big. Because I have so, like you said, all those like, yeah. this, do that, do this, you know. Yeah. You were told, you're swinging too big. You're like over swinging. Well, and you're breaking your wrists and you're, <laughs> yeah. you know. <clears throat> yeah. Up. So here's, here's what information you got. You got probably less than 10 information yeah. out of order. Yeah. Right? You were given information from somebody who loves you probably. Yeah. Yeah, it's <laughs> right? To help me, right? Yeah, and everybody that passes along information has the best intentions in mind. They only care about the person they're only trying to help. Yeah. The problem is what the, usually what they pass along is information that they probably learned months or years into the scheme of things. Right. And then what happens to beginners is they give that information up front. It's way out of order. It's way too advanced. Yeah. So you, we may say some of these things later on, right. but for now we don't care about that we stuff. Just need to swing. Yeah, we got to learn. Yeah, get my stance. yeah, 
and figure out that swish, right? And remember, the swish is in the wrists, kind of forearms and arms. We're not trying to swish the body. The body helps the swish, right? Yeah. So once you get your stance, go back, grab that stick again. Let's go back to what that feels like. And actually, let's do it with that nine wood, <clears throat> but we're going to flip it over. So grab the nine wood, flip it over. We'll do some one-handed swishes. Put that left arm on your on your shoulder, and there you go. Good. Right? Excellent. Yep. Yep, get your feet balanced. Good. Okay. Now, do you hear the swish? Yeah. Right? We want to swish that rainbow. Right. We want the entire rainbow to, to be a sound. Okay. So we don't want just a little corner of the rainbow at the bottom to go swish, swish, swish. Yeah. We want swish through the whole space. There you go. Which means when you start your swish, you have to start it sooner to get that sound all the way through the curve, right? There you go. Right, so this is super important for many, many different reasons. But we don't want a mini swish at impact. Yeah. We want a full swish the full whole swish. way. Full rainbow. Yeah. Because when you do that full rainbow, that full space of the swish, what it does is it, keep doing that, <clears throat> it changes the swing. It creates what we call in golf terms a really nice swing plane or swing path. So that rainbow that you're talking about at the bottom mm -hmm. is, in golf terms, is, is the bottom of the arc. It's called the D-plane because it's shaped like a letter D, okay. right? Which is just like the rainbow that you called it, right? right? Now, when you swish, you enter the rainbow way up here, right. and it goes all the way through and exits on the other side of you. Exactly. There you go. Perfect. Okay, now I'll grab it with two hands and... Just keep that same swish going. Uh, yep, two hands there. Flip your hands. And you got them backwards. Oh. Yeah, there you go. Okay, good. Yep. Weird. Yeah, so that's why when we do it with one hand, with the stick, yeah. it's, you, it's easier. So it flip it back hard. over, grab it two hands. Now you'll feel it. All right, we need more weight with two hands. There you go. So swish that rainbow all the way from the beginning to through much better. Right? So there's a lot of amazing things you're doing today. There's some things that need to be fixed. Right. We're not going to even address those until you've done this for a week or two. Yeah. Because you need to get this part down before we change anything. Yeah. So if I'm at home... Mm-hmm. Like, a good thing for me to do would be to just pick up a golf club and do this. Yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce you to my Saber swing training tool. Okay, Right. Awesome. That's going to be something that you're going to do all these exercises at home. Uh -huh. It comes with a video, all that kind of stuff. Lots of okay. videos to watch and, and work on all this swish stuff. But this video, we're at 33 minutes right now. Wow. This is your personal instructional video. So at this point, this is all you need to do. And, and share it with your husband and say, you know what, this is, this is how we got to where we are. Yeah. And when he sees you swinging at 85 miles an hour, hitting at 240, yeah. he's going to be like, okay, we're just going to do whatever you do on that video. <laughs> <laughs> right? Just right. do that. Right? Good. There you go. Yeah. Right? So you hit the ground. So what's happening so, to uh, your angle? Yeah, my angle? Yeah. Too close and too vertical. Yep, so you got to swish this thing around you a little further out. That elongation is what kind of chunks the ground. So we got to elongate to a point where we just barely skim. Barely skim. Right? So you are going to want to put a little bend in your body. Because when you're swinging straight up and down, it doesn't quite work as well. That was better. Alright, so let's finish up. Let's crush this ball here. And then we'll end the video. And then we'll kind of up your lesson but this has been great all right go for it yay that was your <laughs> do one more <laughs> do one more <laughs> yeah so what happened though let's uh, let's assess it real quick so i definitely hit the ball at the wrong spot yeah so it went that way yeah so you and hit the power it power probably went kind of over here and the ball skimmed out that way exactly 
so put your club down where you connect it. Where I connect it? Yeah. Probably like here. Even right further. Right keep going. Like keep there. going. Keep going. Oh, really? Like keep here? going. Keep going. Yeah. <laughs> you barely tipped it. Yeah. Right? So what this thing here says oh, is so you swung at 73 miles an hour. That's fine. But it didn't give us any other numbers because this truck man couldn't register that your ball went over there. Yeah. <laughs> right? But here's this is the cool part about this, right? At this point, we know exactly, even after lesson one, we know exactly what happened. Yeah, that's crazy. Right? You swung in here. Close. So let your club swing a little further out. There you go. Boom. Better. That was like amazing. <laughs> All right. So now you're at 77 miles an hour. You hit it 267 total. What? You that flew it. Sense. You flew it in the air. T um, sorry, I'm putting get my numbers wrong. 77. You flew it this number 141 it it ended up at 167 okay right that's more <laughs> it yeah, makes more like, sense what? but now when you look at what you're what you're doing with your swing your driver right you're yeah. 240 that's what you drive the ball yeah. right when you hit it well you hit a 240 when you hit a nine wood well we'll call it around 150 so as we start fitting you into these other clubs now we're able to help so where we started with this whole thing, just for video's sake, grab your uh, seven iron, right? We didn't get the before picture. Yeah. <laughs> so grab it, it's, it's out of your bag there. All right, so now go ahead and set up. The way I was yeah, do all that other stuff. You probably can't even remember how to do it. Yeah, well, it's definitely like down. Way down here, and your arms were like way inside, yeah. right? So, you're swishing. Now, stand up tall. Okay, now go ahead and hold it. Right now, we can't reach. Like, we need a longer 7-iron. Right? So, grab the 7-iron that I built for you, which is right here. And now, we'll do the same kind of setup we were doing with the 9-wood and the driver. Right, you're going to need to do some swings. So, do some swings. We're going to allow the club to teach us where to stand. There you go. All right, these are much better swings, much freer. Much freer. Yeah. All right, now you just kind of bring what you think is the right distance over to the ball. All right, take your grip and everything. Now, do a little gut check here. What does that feel like? Where's your balance? It was in your heels a little, right? Yeah. Which meant you were too close. So when you feel like your weight is in your heels, scoot back a little. If your weight's in your, right in the middle. But you, it's gotta be in the middle with both hands on the club. Right, so you can't just put one hand down and then measure. How do you feel there? Okay, go for it. Best guess, right? <laughs> that was great. Yeah, so how far do you normally hit a seven iron? A hundred. A hundred, okay. Yeah. Right, so that one flew 130 wow. and went to 150. You know, and that was a nice, easy swing. You swung yeah, that at felt really good. like set that was 70 miles an hour, which is excellent. Yeah, we know you can go faster, but what you're going to find is once you get to irons, yeah. again, this obstacle course is played with some precision right. and some power. Right? So we want to swing the driver fast, but we don't need to swing the irons as fast. we got to get them moving on this nice circle. So what do you think? Questions? You got any feedback or thoughts or questions? Feedback is like, this is amazingly helpful. <laughs> like, <laughs> wow, thank you so much. Um, and I love it. Like, it feels like a great place to start from, you know? And I just feel like I need to practice a lot of swinging. Yeah. I'm getting my swing freer instead of, I think I was trying to control it based on a lot of information that, and navigating the shorter clubs that was difficult. That was, that made it harder. And watching, you know, golf videos and trying to see how they're doing it. <laughs> yeah. No, feedback is, thank you. This yeah, is yeah. Yeah. Oh, you're welcome. No, you did great. You're a great student. Um, good athlete, so that's very helpful. Yeah, I think, well, that's why I think it would be fun. Like, I think I could get good if I can do it correctly. Yeah. You know, and then it's fun when you're good at something, you know. So I think I have potential. It's just. Yes, for sure. And then that's the thing is 
that's why we did this entire video is be that was your one of your best swings ever right there by the way um, that's why we're doing this full video because you don't need to watch YouTube of anything else you just okay. need to watch this video over and over and over again okay. because what will happen is is you'll pick up information from YouTube or friends or relatives right. and what will happen is it's going to mess up your progress yeah. So if you stick with this stuff, with this. we'll do a whole nother video in a you know a couple weeks where it's like, okay, how do we refine what it was that we learned in the beginning? Right. But until you've kind of got this stuff grooved, we there's no point in adding anything else. Okay. So my only questions would be like, what would be your recommendation for going forward? Yeah. So we, what we need to do is order the clubs right away because yeah. the sooner they come in, the better. Because yeah. then you're not ha handcuffed by playing with your daughter's clubs right. um, that are too short for you right? right so in the meantime though you can borrow these ones you can use that one you can use these woods and nine wood and even that eight hybrid that we were trying earlier okay. so if, I want you to be able to practice a solid three or four times before we meet again okay. right now if that's three or four days from now that's great okay. if it has to take a week or two because of your life schedule etc then it just it's just gonna take that long right so then the clubs will take probably 10 days or so to come in okay. once they come in then you'll be able to do this swing that we're working on with all of your different clubs so what's with life schedules we mm -hmm. have a little break coming up of 10 days but, which is why i want to order them now too, yeah like when we get back yeah perfect. but can i set up like a weekly lesson yeah Would yeah you know, that would be a that would be a good helpful. thing because what that does is it at least makes you commit to practicing within that week. Well, and I feel like you would stop if a bad habit started sneaking in. Correct. You're like, oh, you started doing this, you know. Yeah, we want to we want to avoid those bad habits exactly. And this is where the saber will come in. You'll be able to take, even take the saber possibly with you and be okay. swinging that, you know, mornings, evenings, whatever, yeah, if I possible. Think at home, I'm gonna <laughs> one at home so yeah practice at night in yep backyard. yeah exactly backyard swings are great and i want you to really make sure that you're picturing that rainbow right because that rainbow starts swing back here and stop that rainbow starts kind of more over here not out in front of you okay. right it starts kind of Almost over back. here it's okay. a tilted rainbow right cool. so picture this come on over here i'll show you I'll let you film me do this part. So the video is still recording. All right, so let's take this club. Let's make a rainbow over here. All right. So if I take this table, so come watch from right here. Okay. So this is that rainbow that you were talking about. Right? Okay. It has a it has a swoop to it. Oh, I see. Right. But it starts up here. Yeah. It does. It's not just a little mini rainbow. Here. Right. All the that way up at the top. It starts here and it goes swooping all the way through and it exits on this side. Okay. Right. So if I'm making this swing just with one arm, you can see that it follows that arc. Yeah. Right. It's like perfect. So we're not trying to swing over here in a straight line. Okay. Golf swing isn't played on a straight line, it's played on this big arc which you called the rainbow, which I love. Yeah. And I have to steal that. <laughs> <clears throat> right? So then when you do two hands, you're going here. <laughs> I totally look at it differently now. That's so true. All right? And you can see I got my feet still, and I'm swishing my wrist only. Yeah. My body's turning. All right? So if I was a right-handed golfer, I would swing like this. If I was a left-handed golfer, I would just switch my hands. Yeah. So it's kind of an optical illusion. This hand's here for a lefty. For a righty, it just switches places. It Wow. So it's the same swing whether you're right-handed or left-handed. That's interesting. Yeah. All right, cool. Super Very good. cool.